Hello everyone. We are here one more time to bring the word of God to, co to the courageous people of God, to the warriors of God. And I want to talk about a really important attitude of the warrior of God. We is to be courageous all the time and to run from the spirit of cowardice, which is a spirit that I want to talk about today. So I want to read 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, timidity but a spirit of power, a love and of self-discipline. The spirit of God that God gave us has nothing of cowardice on it. On it. It's a spirit of power and authority. So I want to ask you this question. Are you being courageous? Or sometimes you are not so courageous? That's the question. I want to start saying that life is made of heroes. We read history about heroes. We read books about heroes. We see movies about heroes. We don't read about cowards or watch movies about them. However, many times in, in life, we act like cowards because we let fear get to us. We give in to pressure. We compromise our principles. Sometimes we break our word, our promises. And we don't realize that these things are caused by a spirit, the spirit of cowardice. And he lies to us and convinces us of fear. And once we take in, we become a coward. We start fleeing. We start hiding. We start uh, coming off coming out of the position we should be in. So the first thing I want to talk about is how the spirit of cowardice work, because I want to talk about the spirit of courage, which is a spirit that God gave us. The first thing I want to say is that the spirit of cowardice is very powerful, and it works on the camp, on the Lord's camp, taken out of battle many, many warriors. I want to show this in Judges chapter 7, verse 3 because Gideon had 32,000 men ready for battle but then the Lord said give the announcement and the announcement was this announce now to the people anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead so 22,000 men left, while 10,000 stayed. So uh, there were 30,000 warriors in Gideon's camp. But there was a spirit already working in the camp. And the Lord knew that spirit was there. And the Lord announced to Gideon, proclaim in the camp, Anybody that is fearful of dying in this battle, anybody who is trembling with fear, who became a coward, that's what I'm saying, because they were warriors and they could be courageous, but now they became a coward because there was a spirit working in the camp. And anybody who is like that can turn back home and 22,000 men went back. That's what I'm saying. This spirit is very powerful. And the first thing that cowardice do is take out of the camp of the Lord mighty and many warriors. I want to talk about a little bit who are the cowards. And I want to say that cowards are normal, normal people, ordinary people. People who could win any battle like anyone else, but because their ears are in the enemy's hands, they become cowards. I want to say that nobody's born a coward. We learn how to be one. In the same way, nobody's born like a courageous warrior. We learn how to be one. Courageous or cowards, they are just people who made the choice in the face of fear, in the face of challenge, in the face of danger, 
uh, some people chose the fear and they became cowards. The other ones chose to face their fears and courageously face the challenge and they became courageous warriors. So in the same way, people who have uh, brave and great accomplishments, uh, they can become a coward again because if they choose uh, being fearful, any warrior who chooses to be fearful, they can become a coward again. Second, cowards are those whose the enemy had convinced of fear. God had never convinced anyone to be afraid. He is always trying to convince us, anybody, to be courageous. Be courageous. I am with you. But there is a spirit talking to people. There is a spirit talking to us, convincing us that we are not ready, that we are not powerful, that we can't do the battle. So this spirit uh, that God didn't give us, is the spirit of cowardice. And to be a coward or not, is just a question of whom we let convince us. There are many voices trying to convince us to be fearful and cowardice. The enemy's first strategy is to convince warriors that they are, they are weak and that they are afraid and that they are going to die and that therefore they must not enter the battle. That's what this spirit made, this spirit did with these 22,000 warriors of Gideon. Gideon lost 22,000 warriors for the spirit of fear and cowardice. This is a very powerful spirit. I want to say that nobody ignores that the devil talks to men. Nobody ignores that. But people ignore that men continue listening to these spirits. We have to take... Uh, attention to this because there are many voices talking to our ears and, and, and many of those voices are negative voice is the voice of the enemy trying to make a transform a warrior into a coward it depends on what what, what are we listening um, have you ever think about that there's nothing in God that is fearful that God is never uh, fearful of anything he never defends himself. He's never on the, on the defense. God has always uh, been courageous. God has always been brave. God has always uh, never been intimidated. God has never been frightened. So never run away from anything. So my question is, how can we be people of God and full of the Holy Spirit and, and be fearful? We are listening to the wrong spirit if we are fearful. And if he became a coward, uh, people become cowards when they don't listen to God. And that's the fact. Men lack courage because men is lacking really intimacy with God. Uh, fear, discouragement, consequently, cowardice uh, is the price for a lack of prayer, a life of prayer. Every time I go to God and I stay in prayer, I listen to God. I come out more courageous. I come out encouraged. I come out very uh, excited, renewed, and brave. Uh, I, I want to say that getting rid of cowardice is uh, already the first step to win the battle. And the first step is not the battle in itself. The first step is getting rid of this spirit of cowardice because this spirit can take you out of the battle before you go into the battle, like they did with uh, uh, the Gideon's, uh, Gideon's uh, warriors. I also want to say that cowardice is a spirit that enters through fear. The objective of fear is to turn a warrior into a coward. This happened many times. I want to say that fear is a spirit that is a door to many other spirits. There was one time we were praying deliverance for a lady and the demon said that uh, he was there because of fear. And the grandmother uh, died because she had a fear of become ill. She had fear of infirmity. So fear brought infirmity on that family. And when we rebuilt fear, he said, I don't want to go because if I go, infirmity and illness 
can't come because I opened the door for the infirmity. So finally, we delivered the lady from both spirits. So I want to say the spirit of fear is a, is a door for many spirits. If you have any fear in any area, there's a spirit trying to make you a warrior into a coward. Every time you retreat, that's something that people don't understand. Many people uh, start something and they give up. They go back, they run away, they retreat. Every time we retreat, we are training our spirit to be submissive to cowardice. People should never practice Luke 9.62. Jesus talked about in Luke 9.62 uh, that uh, nobody who puts the hands to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Why not? Because every time you put the hand to something and you, you go back, you retreat, you are training your spirit in cowardice. You are actually opening yourself for cowardice. So being a coward is prefer to suffer than to face the battle and resist. Many people prefer that. Many people prefer uh, the peace of slavery uh, over the battle of deliverance. Uh, unfortunately, it's a choice. That is a, uh, that's what I'm saying tonight. Uh, being a coward is a choice. Being courageous is a choice. And many people prefer peace. They, they try to appease everything. Uh, uh, they don't want to battle. They don't want to face conflict. And that's why they choose slavery. Uh, uh, the only reason evil wins is because there's, there are no enough people to face evil. And evil is illegal. Evil is illegal. Evil should not rule. Evil has no power to rule. Evil does not have to win. Evil does not have to dominate. But there are too many cowards in the world. So evil tries. Because there are, there are not enough people. I know there are so many heroes. There are so many warriors. There are so many people who face the challenge, who face the spirits, who face enemies, who face their own flesh, who face an intimidation. There are many people like that, but I think there are more people that are not trained, that are not fit for battle. That's why there are so many cowards. That's why evil tribes. Being a coward is to refuse to battle the, the, the wars of God, the wars of the Lord. Uh, I want to bring you to Psalm 149. I want to show you the privilege of the calling to be a warrior of God. Uh, Psalm 149, 6. May the praise of God be in their mouths and the double-edged sword in their hands. This is our ministry. It's a ministry of praise and warfare. May the praise of God be in their mouths and a double-edged sword uh, in their hands to inflict vengeance of the nations and pun punishment on the peoples. This vengeance is not ours. It's God's vengeance. So I'm talking about the battles of God, that he gives us the privilege to battle with him, to bind their kings with fetters, their nobles with shackles of iron. This is our privilege in the army of God. He calls us to do that, to carry out the sentence written against them. See, the Lord wrote these sentences against the devils and the spirits in the territory, and he put us there in those territories to fight over those territories, the battles of the Lord. I'm talking about the wars of God. So when we are coward, we just reject the wars of God. We refuse to battle the wars of God. I believe with all my heart is a great privilege being a warrior of God. It's a great privilege facing the demons and facing uh, the challenges and, and using all these weapon that God gave us all the authority and power and anointing and all the strength and protection of the blood and all these weapons and powerful weapons uh, uh, to fight the battles of God but many Christians unfortunately they are in the coward uh, spirit side they, are, they have become cowards not because they are because they are really warriors but because they chose to do not engage in the battles of God. And finally, the verse says, this is the glory of all his saints. So it's a glory of God. It's a privilege to be a warrior of God. So do not be a coward. Do not reject 
the, the words of God. We also become a coward when we let our hands, our needs, and our heart to weaken. Look, our hands are not weak. Our knees are not weak. Our hearts are not weak in the Lord. We are potentially very brave and powerful warriors. I'm talking about what the, the Word of God says what we are. But we can become weak. We can choose to let weakness draw into our hands and go into our bones and make our knees tremble and make our hearts tremble. So this is a choice. I want to read to you Isaiah 35. Uh, verse 3, which is really beautiful, and says, Strengthen the feeble hands and steady the knees that give away. If your knees are giving away because you are trembling, because you are trembling on your foundation, it's because you're not too, too really close to God, you know? It's because uh, uh, fear is kind of uh, weakness, it's, it's, it's really getting in your system, and, and you are. You are a powerful warrior of God, but then your hands start to trembling. Your hands start to, to become feeble. Uh, this is also in uh, this is also in, in uh, Hebrews 12, 12, and I like that because it repeats the same words of uh, Isaiah 35, 3. It says, "Therefore, Hebrews, Hebrews 12, 12, 12. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms." and weak knees. So the Lord is saying you can strengthen your feeble arms and your trembling knees, your weak knees, strengthen them. And I like Psalm 1834 that says that he uh, gives strength to my arms. He, he gives so much strength to my arms that I can pull a, a ark, a ark, a very powerful ark. Uh, so uh, we have the strength of God to uh, strengthen our system to stay in the battle. But if you let yourself to be weakened, then you become what you are not, a coward. And this is also in uh, Proverbs 24.10. It says, if you falter in times of war, uh, trouble, your, your strength is small. So your strength is normally not small. Your strength is very powerful in God. What I'm saying is that our attitude, our choice, because fear knocks at the door of any warrior and it proposes uh, weakness. It proposes, fear proposes this trembling fear over us. Fear comes as an imposition and you have to strongly and determined Say no, because you cannot choose fear and become a very coward person when you are really a great warrior. So uh, do not let your strength go. There are also many people being cowards in the world. I think there are many people who should be brave. They, they are not being brave. Uh, we have this legacy of many people who have come be have lived before us in generations past that left a legacy of shame, le left a legacy of uh, giving up, left a legacy of fear. And, 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 and these people, uh, they, they left a spirit of cowardice in the atmosphere and in the culture. Uh, I'm talking about men who abandoned the marriage and the children and the wife for another woman. If, if you was really courageous, in the Lord, if he was really courageous, you know, there are many factors that make people cowards, that's why they flee, but if, if these people were really courageous in God, they would have never become cowards, they would have never left this uh, legacy of cowardice to, any, to, to the future generation, I'm talking about government leaders and institutions that have chickened out of, in the face of corruptions, if they were really courageous, they would have never banned uh, to corruption. I'm talking about weak women of spirit uh, 
uh, who prefer to be victims of abused men uh, for fear of not being able to support themselves financially. So they stay under all that, those abuse for years and years and years because they have never had the courage to be really courageous and face the challenge. I'm sure if they have done that, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that God somehow would have helped because God helped people who are really courageous. I'm talking about pastors who did not preach the truth for fear of losing their sheep. If they would be really courageous, their church, their church would have been saved and many people would have set an example to be uh, courageous too, but many leaders left this example of cowardice, and many people uh, after them became coward too. I'm talking about parents who were afraid of correcting their children, they become delinquents. If, if the parents were courageous in God, I know it's difficult to be courageous. I know you have to be close to God. I know you have to have intimacy with God, but that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about the army of God, the ones that should never, in any occasion, uh, become a coward. Because we are fighters and warriors for God, we should have never been in the position of being a coward. So I'm talking about a young person who, for the fear of not being accepted by their peers, choose to smoke with them, choose to uh, use drugs, choose to steal or do whatever their friends are doing because they have never, they don't have the courage to be uh, to face the opposition and to be rejected and 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 finally confront evil because people don't have that uh, strength in God. I'm talking about young women that for the face fear of losing their boyfriend. I'm sorry for the fear of losing the boyfriend. They did not. Uh, refused their bodies, they gave their body away, you know, uh, before a wedding, because, and they repented later because they were coward on that time. You know, I'm talking about righteous men and women that bowed themselves before the wicked. I'm talking about people who, because of the need of some favor, the need of, of some special financial thing, they, for, or for some kind of dread of intimidation, they became coward and they gave in to evil. I'm talking about that. Every day, the world see uh, uh, many, many uh, coward people in action and the world needs more courageous people. I know you can only be courageous in God. I know you can only be courageous in the presence of God. But that's why I'm finished today with this message. I want to talk a little bit about why people can't be brave. Why people can't be brave so many times. I, I want to say that it, it's the lack of communion and intimacy with the one who's never afraid of anything, never runs away. But people have no intimacy with the God who never defends himself, with the God who never gives in to pressure, with, with the God who never corrupts, these people can become cowards because uh, of the lack of intimacy. They cannot operate in the spirit that God gave us. God gave us the spirit of power. But people cannot operate in the spirit of power when they have no intimacy with the God who gave them the spirit of power. The fact that God gave the spirit of power doesn't mean that we operate on that spirit. Many times the people of God operate in the opposite spirit, the spirit of cowardice and fear because they don't have enough communion with the power of God. I want to say that the spiritual world, the demons, they recognize both cowards and warriors. They recognize both. Satan tasks people. You know, he already knows who has a weak spirit that gives him under pressure. He knows that. He knows the cowards, you know, uh, who has who is soft in spirit, weak in their will, blackmailable people, you know, people who, uh, who can hide. They think they can hide themselves in the church or anywhere, but the spiritual world knows the cowards where they are. They are silent, silently fearing. They are uh, hiding themselves in the multitude, but the demons know them. 
the same way they know the warriors. You know, you don't have to, you don't need to say you are a warrior. You don't need to bring your uh, uh, your sword. You don't need to uh, appear like a warrior because the devil knows who who have a fighting spirit. The devil knows who are close to God, who do not bend, who are not intimidated. The devil knows uh, the ones who do not allow themselves to be dominated or manipulated by others. The devil knows because he tests people. The devil tests people. They test their courage. They test uh, their attitude. They test that spirit. They test their mind. All the time, the devil knows who are the warriors. And, and they are not silent. They do not accept things. They resist. They are not easily tamed. You know, uh, the demon, if, if the demons attack them, they will have a hard time because they know he, they are attacking a warrior of God. But the cowards, they know the cowards. They have attacked the cowards. They know the cowards only cry. They only defend themselves. They justify. They, 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 they just, you know, they just have a pity party. They, 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 they uh, complain all the time. They do not have that resistance. So the devil knows who you are. I want to finish this word talking about on how to make a brave warrior. How? How can we be a brave warrior? I found that example in David. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, because David was came, coming from the Nathan, and on the third day, when he came to Ziklag, the, the city was burned, and all the people were captive, were taken captive, and uh, David was greatly distressed on that situation, and he was really, uh, he felt anguish and everything. He was even threatened. Uh, this life was threatened by his men. And uh, 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6, I want to show you that fear knocks on the door of anyone. Fear knocks on the door of the brave and of the coward. The difference is how to answer that door. And David, here says, David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord his God. What I want to say is that courageous people have this door. To open. They don't open the door that fear is knocking on. But they have this other door, which is the type of relationship with God that they have. They have this door to open. And, and David, uh, just on the verse 7, he said, David said to Abiatar the priest, the son of Ahimelech, bring me the effort. Abiatar brought it to him, and David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue this raiding party. Shall I pursue them? Will I overtake them? You know, when a person has this relationship with God, he asks us God about the fight. He asks the, he asks the Lord about uh, this, this war. Can I war them? Can I war with them? Are you, are you going to go with me if I war with them? I know God, I, I believe God, God is so happy when people come to him with this attitude, you know, they just have been struck by tragedy, you know, they were assaulted, all the women and children were taken away, all their possessions were stolen, the city was burned, you know, the people were really anguished and distressed, but David come to God with this question, can I worry with them? Can I make war? Would you come with me uh, if I go against this party? And the Lord uh, happily answered him, pursue them. He answered, you will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. Of course, because I am going to go with you. The Lord likes the fight. The Lord is a warrior. And when fear knocks on the door of a warrior, 
If the warrior has this type of relationship with God, he opens this door of the possibility of God going into war with him. And that's what David did. David did, you know? And I want to ask this, what kind of relationship? That's the, 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 the really difference on the question. What kind of relationship are you having with God? Because I want to I wanna suggest that many people in the church, they have different kinds of relationship with God. They, many people don't have the really type of relationship they should be having. I want to propose three things that people, three kinds of relationship people having with God, and when fear strikes, uh, those relationships don't don't help them. Like the kind of that, the kind of relationship they just cry, you know, they just cry. They they just ask for mercy and defend themselves. They become, you know, they they never learn to fight in times of peace. And, and because they, they have never, never uh, trained themselves to war, they have this relationship with God that they just ask for mercy. You know, I know people in the church, they just ask for mercy all the time. The second time is the kind of, you know, the people who are not faithful with God and they have uh, a bad conscience. When you have a bad conscience, you don't want to go into war because you don't want to face the enemy because you, you fear the accusation. So this is a kind of relationship that when, when tragedy strikes, it doesn't help you. The third one is the kind of relationship that people have that they don't talk to God much often. They are so long, they don't talk to God that in the times of trouble, they feel embarrassed. They feel embarrassed of talking to God because they don't talk to him for a long time. And why am God going to talk to God right now? I don't have intimacy because I don't usually talk to him. I don't have this kind of relationship that David had. David had this kind of relationship. It's so different, you know, when tragedy strikes, when the, the thief comes and takes everything, and, and, and when everything seems really lost, David comes to God with, with a question. Can I war with them? If I go to war with them, are you come with me? This is so great. This is so wonderful. You know why? Because I believe the attitude of David is the same of Jeremiah in Jeremiah 20, 11. And I love this verse because uh, this also shows not only uh, the type of relationship I have with God, but the kind of relationship that God had with me which is very much important, which is much more important how God relates to me, how he sees me, and how he is with me all the time. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 20, 11 says, but the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior. So my persecutors will stumble and not prevail. They will fail and be thoroughly disgraced. Their dishonor will be never forgotten. Because the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior. That's what David knew. David knew that the kind of relationship God had with him is this. I'm with you. I'm with you like a mighty warrior. The thing I think is many people in the church, they are not mighty warriors. How can God be with them like a mighty warrior if they are not? You know, there are many people who don't want to fight. They are lazy. They are not prepared for war. They flee from war. They, they don't engage with the enemy. They, they, they just, you know, they just tolerate stuff. They just cry under stuff. They just run under pressure. They just give in. They are cowards. They are not with God like mighty warriors. That's why God can be with them like mighty warriors. So uh, the other thing is that... Uh, David, we know that David faced a Goliath. And I just want to point these two things, that Goliath was a public enemy, was a public challenge. But what nobody knew was that David was used to facing lions and bears in the private. And what I want to say is that when you beat lions and bears, 
in your private life that nobody knows you are collecting those victories every day you are just preparing yourself to really face a big giant uh, in front of everyone and have the victory but I don't think people can face a big giants big pu public giants before they face uh, and they overcome those little barriers, those small barriers. People can have the tendency to despise the small barriers. And why do I want to say that? Uh, uh, how to become a warrior? You have to collect small victories every day. When you collect small victories every day, every month, and every year, you, you, you are becoming a warrior without knowing. God is building a warrior inside of you because you learn how to collect small victories. From a small victory to a small victory, one day you will slay a giant. One day you will take off the head of a giant and it will be a powerful victory. I want to say that unfortunately, uh, the culture of many Christians are not to collect small victories, but collect small uh, losses. This is really bad. This, I, I've seen this with my own eyes in the church since I was a child. Many, many years in the church, I see people losing. I see people losing small things. They lose money. They lose jobs. They lose opportunity. I mean, I mean Christians, the servants of God, they lose uh, friendships. They, take, they let the enemy take away friendships. They let the enemy take away uh, their opportunities. They let the enemy take away their joy. I, I see people distressed emotionally. I see people losing battles, losing stuff, losing uh, things. People are, are so accustomed to lose in the church that they really are trained to be cowards. They are really trained by experience, by default, to be cowards, you know. But you have to uh, collect victories every day. I want to point one verse here that is uh, the, the thing that I, the culture that should be on in our lives as Christians is Proverbs 4.18. Proverbs 4.18 says, The path of the righteousness is like the first gleam of dawn, shining ever brighter to the full light of day. The path of the righteousness, the righteous, is like the first gleam of dawn, shining ever brighter uh, to uh, the full light of day. It doesn't say that uh, it is, it's like uh, you gain and lose. You, you, you gain and lose. You fall and you, you get up again. You stumble here and you fall over there. You, 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 are, you, are, you win one battle and you lose the other one. And you, are, you rise and you fall. It's not like that. It, it's like, it's like uh, shining ever brighter to the full light of day. What I see here is God training warriors, collecting small victories in small territories in the everyday life. Collecting small victories, collecting small victories, grow in strength, grow in experience, battling, facing the spiritual world. And, and these kind of people I'm talking about, the righteous, we, we, uh, which uh, uh, the light, the, the, which life is going, shining ever brighter, they, they are just growing, growing, growing in victory, growing in victory, and becoming a warrior. That's the brave. That's, that's how you build a brave. That's how there is a brave uh, person coming because uh, he is he's used to collect victories. He, is, he, he gets used to win. He gets used to uh, collecting a small victory, to collecting uh, victories over lions, uh, killing lions, destroying bears. And every now and then, they are, they are getting another victory. They are getting another victory one day they will slay a giant. I want to finish this word, bringing you uh, the last point, which is being brave and courageous. What it is being brave and courageous? What it is, first of all, it, it, it will be seven things. I'm talking about seven things right now. I'm just going to mention them. The first one is uh, Ephesians 6, 10. Learn to have strength in the Lord. Ephesians 6, 10 says, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. There is a way. There is a source of power 
that we can become strong. We have to go there. We have to stay there. We have to draw that power from that source. And, and Ephesians 6, 10 says, be strong in the Lord. So learn how to strengthen yourself in the Lord. Pray, 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 and pray for yourself. I see people praying for many things. They don't know how to pray for themselves, to strengthen themselves in the Lord. I pray for other things, but I spend much of the, my time in prayer praying to strengthen myself. So I strengthen myself every day. I pray for many things over me. I pray for my head, my hands, my feet. I pray for my eyes. I pray for my ears. I pray for my mouth. I pray for the anointing. I pray for every part of me. I bless every part of me, so I strengthen myself in the Lord. And the second thing is know how to answer the door when fear is knocking because fear will knock in everyone's door. Fear will knock in everyone's door and you have to know how to not choose fear. Do not choose fear over strength. You have to, to always uh, rebuke because it's a spirit. Remember, cowardice is that spirit who took away 22,000 warriors even before the battle began. So when fear comes before you go into battle, it always comes before you go into battle. You don't even went to the camp of the enemy and he's already battling you. He's already fighting you. He's already strategizing uh, his things in your head. So the first thing you fight is not the battle. The first thing you fight is the spirit of cowardice. So Third thing, learn to protect and defend what little God has given you. You know, God gave, uh, I, I like one thing that the, the brothers of David said to him when he saw the giant for the first time. They said, you should be with those a few, a little few, a sheep of our father. You should be there with those little few sheep. And and was, was, was not a big, big uh, 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 sheep but it was really a, just a few. But David was really taking good care of the just a few sheep. I want to say just a few. Because people uh, despise when God gave us a small territory to fight, to protect. People despise when God gave us uh, small things to protect. Uh, not many things to protect. Uh, it's like God gave us just a few sheep. You know, but David was so faithful. He faced a lion, he faced a uh, bear, and he defended those just a few sheep. And if you learn how to just uh, protect the few, the small, the, the not many things that God gave you, you know, it could be just your family, your marriage, your finances, your strength, your joy, you know, the anointing on your head, Many people don't know how to protect even that. You know, protecting the atmosphere in your house. Many people don't know how to do that. Many people don't know how to protect that most precious uh, thing, which is their life of prayer. They don't protect the most precious treasure they have, their life of prayer. Their prayer life is everything. The prayer life is everything for a warrior. And people don't know how to protect that. How can you protect a big territory? How can God give you, how can God give you many, 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 you, many a sheep to protect if you don't know how to protect the just a few? So uh, the, the fourth thing is rebuke the enemy aloud. Rebuke the enemy aloud. If you are a brave and courageous, do not silent when you face the enemy. I always tell people, you have, to have, you have to say something to the devil. He has to be able to listen to your voice. You know, because uh, the, the sword is in our mouths. The sword of God is in our mouths. And you face the devil with the sword. And the sword is in your mouth. If you don't open your mouth, you're not using your sword. So if the enemy doesn't hear your voice, you're not fighting him. You just you just tolerating him. If you if you don't know how to rebuke out loud, you're not really fighting. So know to rebuke the enemy aloud. You know, let him hear your voice strong and firm and repeatedly. Also, 
do not get offended. Do not get offended. If you want to be a really brave and courageous, you cannot afford to be offended because offense will come. I find it so interesting that the devil has this strategy. It, it always works. It always works. Uh, when people start doing things in the house of God, he knows that he do, he, if he does just this one thing, which is to cause offense, if he knows just this one thing, to offend that person, the devil knows that the person will give up. So many people have given up because of offense. You offended, got offended in the marriage and left the marriage. Got offended in the family and left the family. Got offended in the ministry and left the ministry. Got offended in the church. People leave the churches not because God told them, but because they got offended. And they do not admit that they got offended. They always say that God told me my time is up. No, God did not say anything, but you got offended, unsatisfied, disappointed with something, and then you decide that your time is up. No, people do stuff. People don't take decisions because they get offended. This spirit of offense is the first you have to uh, uh, overcome uh, together with cowardice. If you want to be a mighty warrior of God, never give up. Never give in to offense. Uh, the other thing is never give up. Never give up. That's the way God built a warrior. A warrior is a person who is tested here, tested there, tested over there, and uh, and God allows one obstacle, and then he allows another obstacle, and he allows many, many, many obstacles on the way, and he's just testing the person to see if he, oh, he overcome this obstacle. He, he overcame this one. Let's see if he's going to face the, the next one too. So many people have uh, overcome and faced so many obstacles, but there's one point. There's one time that they say no more. Enough is enough. And that is the time of uh, uh, that people lose everything. That's, that's the time where people lose everything. When they fought for many years, they fought for many years, but there's one day they say, I'm tired, I'm tired. So do not get tired. If you got tired, strengthen yourself in the Lord. Renew yourself in the Lord, but do not give up because the victory is just maybe over the next Obstacle. The last thing is, I want to say this to you. If you want to be brave, stop crying. Stop complaining. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Also, stop running from things. Face things up. Do not hide yourself. Speak up. Do not put off with stuff. Do the stuff. Do not justify uh, laziness and fear. Uh, also, be honest with yourself. Be honest. Recognize your mistakes and virtues. Uh, deal with yourself. Many people do not have the courage to deal with themselves. How can they be a warrior? Uh, also, do not live unbroken. Uh, I mean, do not leave broken relationships behind. Many people have those relationships, you know, church, friends, family, uh, work, and, 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 and friends. And they exit the relationship, they never come back to repair. I, I find it uh, the, one of the most uh, problematic and, 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 and uh, weakness, one of the most uh, terrible weakness of people is to live broken relationships unrepaired. You know, people get got off from one church, go to another, and just they just get on with their lives. Uh, they leave one family, go to another, one marriage, go to another, they leave one friendship, go to another, and they leave things broken behind. They do not fix things and they expect the blessings and, and that doesn't work. That doesn't work for, for a uh, warrior of God. A warrior, a real, a, a real warrior, they always fix stuff. 
They always fix stuff before moving on. The last thing is tell the truth. Always tell the truth. Stop thinking that the truth will hurt people. Tell the truth in love. But please, show people that you believe in the truth. That you do not fear telling the truth. Sometimes uh, I'm watching a TV show or something, a movie, and I find it so admirable how the people, they are not God's people, you know, how the people, there are people of the world, there are people that they despise God and they value this thing, which is telling the truth. You know, they value so much and, and they tell the truth to their, to their peers and they tell the truth and, you know, they honor people who tell the truth. These are the people sometimes we despise because of they are so corrupt in other areas. They are so corrupt in other, uh, in other points, but they love and they tell the truth. Not always, but they tell the truth. And also, do not uh, procrastinate things. You are a warrior of God. You know what to do. So just get out and do it. Do the stuff. Stop thinking and start doing. Stop making excuses and show to the world that you are more courageous than a coward, that you're not going to live like a coward. I want to bless you with this uh, counsels of the Word of God. I want to bless you with this image, with this message that God put in my heart. I want to share this with you. I hope that has blessed you. If it has and you want to leave me a message, I would be grateful for that. I want to pray for you. Father God, thank you for this message, but thank you mostly for the spirit of war. Thank you for the spirit of courage because that's the spirit you gave us and that's the spirit that is upon me. That's the spirit who gave me uh, this message. That's the spirit who gave me this urge to put out this message for people, Father, because your people are a army, uh, an army, and they need to be courageous. They need to get, get rid of cowardice. And I rebuke every cowardice right now. I rebuke every spirit of fear and cowardice of, of, of your people. And I proclaim the spirit of courage, the spirit of power, the spirit of strength, the spirit of Father, of excitement and for the privilege of warring in the wars of God. And I bless your people who hear this message in Jesus' mighty name. I bless you to be a very powerful warrior of God. Be strong in the Lord. Face your enemies. Get small victories every day. Slay your giant and continue on until the Lord rewards you with a crown on your head because you were a mighty warrior and you deserve. I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.